Well, hey there. It's so good to be here for the day two of the conference. Um, Alana, welcome to our yeah. session. This is so fun. And thank you. I know you put so much work into getting everything together for this. And we hope that all of you listening and participating have been really encouraged so far. Yeah, it's been really fun so far. I just, I, we're more than halfway through now, which is crazy and can't wait to see what comes next. But yeah. today, right now, um, our session is going to be about prayerful productivity, um, which is something I think today, especially is just so important for women uh, and mm -hmm. men alike, but, but for women, especially, I just think that we have this burden kind of like this unspoken burden to do everything. And, and I know for me, I can almost wear my busyness and my, like what I can get done as a badge. And so there's a lot of pressure to get it done. And so I know that we've talked, um, before about the importance of not making busyness an idol, but on the other side of that coin, we need to get things done and we want to be efficient so that we can be stewards of our time. And so that's kind of what today is going to be about. Yeah. Well, and I love starting with this idea that busyness can be an idol, you know, not just the things you do, those can definitely be idols, but even the act of staying busy, right? I think we've all met somebody who like, if they were to sit down for five minutes with nothing to do, they would almost freak out because in so many ways, I think Western culture and post-industrial revolution influences it. I think that the, um, like that Protestant work ethic influences it. And there's this sense of if you aren't actively working or contributing, then you're less worthy of taking up time and space on this planet. And, and it translates into our spiritual lives too, right? We sometimes even come into prayer with this idea of, well, if I'm not actively, like if I don't come with an agenda or if my mind wanders, then my prayers are subpar and God's going to be up there mad at me. So we put so much undue pressure on ourselves in our daily lives to perform. And I think that that pressure translates into our prayer lives where we'll beat ourselves up if we get distracted or we'll berate ourselves if we miss a quiet time or things like that. Yeah, I agree. And I think that it just, um, you know, it just serves us so well to learn the skill. I mean, it's a cultivated skill of being still and being okay with it because it's mm -hmm. so hard. I am that person a lot of times that just, if I have downtime, I feel guilty. Like, I feel like what, you know, I need to find something to fill this space to do. And mm -hmm. I have this idea in my head that, that the list is never done. And there right. has to be a time, um, you know, even though technically, yeah, the dishes always get dirty, the, you know, laundry needs to be washed. The mm -hmm. podcast needs to be put up. You know, those things are going to have, they're going to keep coming. But when that is your focus, I mean, then that, that kind of shifts us into this whole idea, which I love, which I think you attribute this to me and I attribute it to you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this revelation that busyness mm -hmm. is a state of mind, because I remember yeah. my mind being blown. We were having a conversation mm -hmm. on one of our podcast episodes yeah. about busyness is a state of mind. And I thought, oh my goodness. And once I realized that, I remember going to the grocery store and feeling like super rushed. And mm -hmm. I, and I just made a point of being just practicing what we know now as mindfulness, um, mm -hmm. as the catchphrase, but I just stopped and I looked around. And I was like, I have nothing pressing to do. I'm shopping. Mm -hmm. I'm walking through the mm -hmm. grocery store. Thank you for this time of rest. Thank you that yeah. my legs are carrying me through the store. Mm. And I was just really mindful mm -hmm. of the blessings of those things. And just, I just breathed and it yeah. was wonderful. Like that one moment, I just remember that moment stands out. It was one of the first times that I practiced that knowledge that busyness is a state of mind. And I quieted mm -hmm. my mind and I, and I met with God briefly and it was great. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like, let's say that you're running late for an appointment and it's going to take you 15 minutes from your house to where you need to go. And basically no matter what, you're going to arrive two or three minutes late, right? So first of all, 
being really, really stressed out of it while you're in the car is dangerous. <laughs> a lot of accidents are attributed to rushing. But also, like being really, really anxious at a red light is not going to make that red light change sooner. You know what I mean? And I think that sometimes this stress that we carry around with busyness, I think it has a lot of roots in pridefulness because it's this sense of, if I don't get there, you know, if I get there at 10.02, then this person's life is going to be destroyed. Well, no, you're, you're not that important. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like worst case scenario, they're going to move on without you. And, you know, nobody's going to do that for being two minutes late. And so there's a sense of we can't stop, especially as women and as moms, because we're so used to juggling so many things. And it's this idea of, well, we can't slow down. So I like going through this kind of mental exercise. And it kind of happened to me. I was pregnant with our third son and got swine flu. We had a three-year-old and a one-year-old who was on a feeding tube and needed like 10 feedings a day and lots of medical appointments and intervention. If you were to look at my schedule, I couldn't have taken time out to be sick, but <laughs> my body said, oh, guess we have swine flu now. There was no choice, right? And nobody starved. Nobody, um, you know, nobody died from neglect. It wasn't a fun couple weeks, but you can take time off. If you were to get into a major accident today and spend three weeks in the hospital, Life goes on without you. And sometimes we have a hard time admitting that. And I think a lot of that is pride. We feel like, no, I'm the only one who can get these things done. Or me being anxious about this is the only way it's going to get done. If somebody else doesn't, like nobody else can worry about this like I can. And if I don't worry about it, something terrible is going to happen. When Those are all lies. And, and sadly, it's a hard pill to swallow. But a lot of them have roots in pride that we feel irreplaceable. And I think a huge wake up moment is when you realize, you know, if something gets you out of commission, the world does go on without you. That is absolutely true. Just coming from a person, a recovering, busy state of mind person, whatever you would call, mm -hmm. I'm sure we could come mm -hmm. up with a catchy name for that, but mm -hmm. a busy holic, um, <laughs> a busy holic. I definitely know I, when I realized that pride was at the root of it, it has to do with people pleasing and wanting mm -hmm. people to perceive you in a certain way. It comes from pride. Like you said, feeling like if I don't do it, it's not going to get done or it's not going to get done right. Or if I don't worry about it getting done, then I'm not, I don't care enough about it or something. And, and it comes, it comes from finding your value in the things that you do and not who you mm -hmm. are and whose mm -hmm. you are. Um, and yeah, I, I just totally resonate with that. So yeah, that for me helps to realize that, Oh, wow, there's something there. It, this isn't just benevolence underneath. Exactly. All of this. It, there's mm -hmm. something kind of ugly under here that helps in the desire and the like drive to move forward out of it. So, and, and to mm -hmm. take it to God, because it's a starting point. If, if you're wondering, yeah. if you feel like, ah, oh, I always feel busy. I never feel like I'm doing enough. I never feel like I'm enough. A good yeah. first step is confession because you can just say, okay, God, I confess that this is coming from a place of pride, or this is coming mm -hmm. from a place of not believing that who I am in Christ is enough that I have yeah. to do something else, that I'm not resting in the gospel fully. And that's freeing. Yeah. It's kind of scary it and kind of not great, but it's freeing. <laughs> yeah. Well, and how much of our addiction to busyness has to do with trying to prove our love to God even. Yeah. And that's sad. You know, imagine if you knew that your little kid was running around like cleaning the room and cleaning the house and doing all kinds of nice things for you. But they were doing it because they were scared you'd be mad if they didn't. Oh, you know, like that's, that's just heartbreaking. <laughs> you want them to do it, you know, like out of out of love. And so I this is a little different than than what we have on our, our outline here, but I think it'd be useful to like give some antidotes, like for people who do have that addiction busyness. What are some practical antidotes to that? And I think a, a huge one is learning to embrace like a Sabbath rest because even God rested after 
creation. He could have kept going or he very easily could have said the world can't keep on spinning if I'm not, you know, intricately involved in every part of it. But he he rested as an example to us. So like if if God can afford to take a day off, <laughs> then we we certainly can. And it is commanded. And I find it again, I'm going to come off a tiny bit heavy handed. I find it interesting that out of all the Ten Commandments, we treat them as so holy and is so unyielding, except for remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. And now I don't think that this means that we need to necessarily, in every case, make it a literal sundown Friday to sundown, you know, like, I don't think it needs to be, we, do, we don't need to be legalistic about it. But I also feel like too many Christians just, that's the one of the Ten Commandments that they just throw away when it was made for us, right? Like it wasn't made so that we can be legalistic. It was made as a gift to us because otherwise we do get so addicted to being busy. That's a really good point. And um, <clears throat> I think sometimes I justify not embracing Sabbath um, because I think, well, I rest other times throughout the week. Mm -hmm. You know, I have these other chunks of time, but I think there's something important about that length of time. It doesn't have to be the 12 hours or the, what I don't mm -hmm. know what it, what it is, 24 hours, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to be a number of hours or anything. But I think there really is having one day more than just to rest physically, but also to be reminded of the importance of being still with God. Yeah. Um, but I just, I think that, that absolutely that, that commandment, it, it does get kind of swept under the rug, like, oh, mm -hmm. well that was for them. That's not for us. So, yeah. yeah. And there's so much in nature that reflects this idea. You know, you, you think about the seasons, we're both in Alaska where winter gets really dramatic and it's, it's a time for rest. Things need to lie fallow. Or even in the Old Testament law, there were certain laws about every so many years, let your fields lie fallow because nothing is meant to work 24 seven. Yeah. I mean, just agriculturally, it doesn't work to over farm. It just doesn't, you know, you mm -hmm. deplete the mineral supplies and yeah, the whole, the whole world is the, the universe probably is built on those same kinds of examples. And I think too, when we get this busyness addiction, it can impact our prayers and that it's really hard to be still. If you're always used to doing something and you decide you're going to take time out to pray, there's going to be something in the back of your mind saying, oh, this isn't safe for me. I've got to be doing. Yeah, I actually, um, so it reminds me of uh, two different quotes. We have a couple of really favorite quotes that we have, like that have been with us through both of the podcasts that we've done over the years. One of them is that quote, I think it's St. Francis de Salle, but I'm not sure, but he says something to the effect of, you know, if I uh, spend an hour in prayer and I spend the entire time, I'm paraphrasing here, the entire time uh, getting distracted and bringing myself gently back to God, bringing my focus gently back to God, it's an hour well spent. Um, and then it, it kind of goes into this other uh Martin Luther quote, which actually I found a quote from Spurgeon about Martin Luther. So I'm going to read that because I, I love just, you know, layering on the, the, <laughs> the, the forefathers of the church. But um, Spurgeon says, I like that saying of Martin Luther when he says, I have so much busy business to do today, then I shall not be able to get through it with less than three hours prayer. Now, most people would say, I have so much business to do today that I have only three minutes for prayer. I cannot afford the time. But Luther thought that the more he had to do, the more he must pray or else he could not get through it. That is a blessed kind of logic. May we understand it. And Amen. yeah, and I just feel like this whole idea of Sabbath is it's that time of, of sowing quiet into our lives. And if you really have to look at it as a necessary quiet to be productive, ultimately, I guess mm -hmm. you could do mm -hmm. that if you're just that 
<laughs> that focused on the on the produ productivity. But I think there's definitely lessons to learn in the quiet about the value of the quiet for itself and for its own sake mm -hmm. and for connecting with God. But, you know, it, it has an additional benefit of that solitude and that quiet. Martin Luther knew that I need to take within this day that's so busy, mm -hmm. I need to take solitude and quiet and connection with God to even be able to bear productive yeah. fruit. And I think it shows a lot of humility because mm -hmm. it's saying, yeah, it I have so pride. much to do today that I must give my time to the Lord in order to even try to achieve everything that I meant to achieve today, <clears throat> as opposed to what we were talking about. I'm so important and indispensable that I need to hurry and bustle. And then there's also, there's so much benefit even in our own minds. So like, let's think about what happens. You know, like we, we all have those days where we have way too much to do. Everything feels so chaotic. And I feel like those are the times, just like Martin Luther said, where pausing to pray, now does it have to be a three hour chunk? No, but pausing to pray can have such benefits. Even if all we're talking about is just the practical benefits that come to us in this world, right? Like if we were to not even start talking yet about the spiritual benefits of prayer, because when you're in that mindset, your brain is so chaotic, right? It's like the closet that the second you open it, everything's going to spill out. And all the stuff that spills out are like all the things that you're trying to keep track of that you have to do that day. But then you get to kind of like organizing that. And then all of a sudden you realize, you know, like how many of us have like a teenager who's like way too much stuff in the closet. And then we show them how to organize and like, oh, I have so much more room than I thought. I feel like that's a good analogy for our schedules. We feel like, oh, there's no way I'm going to get everything done. But we take just a little bit of time to prayerfully like plan the day. And mm -hmm. I love praying over my to-do list because that's what it feels like. It feels like mental organization, which is exactly what it is. That's and then exactly you realize, what oh, it is. Yeah. yeah, I have so much more time and space than I thought I did. And even creating that sense of spaciousness, kind of like you at the grocery store. Or going back to our analogy of the woman rushing to an appointment that she's already going to be a couple minutes late to, like you could be in that car rushing and gripping the steering wheel and really stressed, or you could be in that car saying, I'm going to get there when I get there. God is in control of everything. God is going to make time. Like I, I love reminding myself of that. There's no reason why God can't invent time out of nothing for you. If there was truly something that was so important that you literally, the world would stop turning if you didn't get it done, I firmly believe that God's going to help you find a way to make sure that gets done. And so you can be in this car stressing about being late, or you could say, like, I'm right where I'm supposed to be right now. Everything is in God's hands. I have all the time in the world. I've got 10 minutes until I get there anyway. So I may as well enjoy this 10 minutes of quiet with the Lord. Yeah, I I couldn't agree more. And I've done that very thing where I've just been like, it's like you just get to this place of surrender. Now that doesn't mm -hmm. mean that you make excuses for not you know, True. if you're, if you're chronically late to everything because you don't get yeah. ready till the last minute, which I've been there, um, <laughs> you, it's a little disrespectful, it, to it's those disrespectful around you. it and, and you, there might be a problem there, but yes. there are so many times when there's something that's not your fault. There's an accident on the freeway, there's, you know, mm -hmm. construction or whatever. And you just find mm -hmm. yourself in a situation where you're going to be late or you're not going to be able to do something there, there is just, there's a lot of freedom in just stopping and saying, okay, mm -hmm. there's literally nothing I can do about this right now. Yeah. Let me just be still and let me ask God for help inside of this mm -hmm. time. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. And just creating that sense of spaciousness, I think really, really helps. So going back to this story of Martin Luther and his really, really busy day, I think there's some great applications for us too. So on the days when it feels like you have way more to do than you're ever going to be able to get done. <clears throat> I think that coming to God in a prayerful way, like opening up your calendar or your planner and just saying, Hey God, here's all the stuff on my plate today. Help me to mentally organize this. Help me to decide what's pressing and what I don't need to worry about today. Help the things that I'm doing to be done with a sense of calm and efficiency, right? Because 
let's say you've got um, 10 things to do and 45 minutes to do them. And on a good day, it would take you an hour to do them, right? You take that list to God. First of all, he might bring to mind things that you don't need to do, like right at the second. And you could just push them away until later. It's like, it's things that are totally out of your mind that you don't need to be holding on to. I, I think that we underestimate how much mental energy it takes to just carry things in our head, right? So there are certain things that we could just let go of. And then now maybe you've got eight things on your list and still not quite enough time, but you can ask God, like, help me to, to do this in the most efficient way possible. Like thinking about errands, maybe you were planning to go from A to B to C, but really like a more efficient route, just based on the way you have to drive to get there is going A, C, B. Like those are things that God can bring to mind. And then lastly, I think when we invite God into the kind of minutia of our day, it's also inviting things to go more smoothly, right? And this doesn't have to become superstitious. And it's not to say that you're never going to run into a red light or get a printer jam or things like that. But there's this sense of, um, I'm praying over all these things to do. If they all go really smoothly, it's going to be a half hour and I'm done. If they go really, really poorly, it's going to be five hours and I'm I'm just going to procrastinate, right? So we can pray for that sense of just ease and smoothness and kind of a, a releasing of the friction because so much of, of what we do, it's worrying about what we have to do, right? And if we can get over that, then we can just get to doing what we need to do. I think that's one of the, one of the keys of this idea that busyness is a state of mind. It is always true ever i can't think of a single time when it has not been true that the things that i think about doing like the time that i let's say this the time that i spend thinking about what has to be done mm -hmm. is is sometimes longer than it takes to do the thing that's number mm -hmm. 1 and number mm -hmm. 2 what is almost always true is the amount of stuff that i think i need to get done is rarely the reality of what it takes to get those things done. I'm almost always pleasantly surprised once I just mm -hmm. put my nose to the grindstone, how long it yeah. takes. But when you sit with God, when you, I, so I go into it with what are the triggers that make me now turn to God where before mm -hmm. they would just make me freak out. <laughs> mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. one of them is that feeling of just overwhelmed, just like this, this yeah. pressing feeling. So, you know, just, Take a few minutes, like the next time that you just feel anxious, irritable, overwhelmed mm -hmm. because of the things that you perceive you need to do or the things that you actually need to do, um, just use that as kind of a trigger. Start thinking of like, okay, mm -hmm. I don't have, I don't have to operate this way and just pause and, and just go to God and maybe ask him, what is it that I'm feeling anxious about? What is it that I'm feeling irritable about or that's hanging over my head that's a burden? And yeah. and start to try and maybe unravel that, whether it's if you have the time and the space to, to write it down or just as you're doing whatever you're doing at that moment, just ask God to bring to mind what are the things. And a lot of times for me, what it is, is I just have several things that are hanging over my head that aren't done that I'm dreading doing or think are going to take too long for me to actually get done. And, mm -hmm. and God can help you kind of untangle mm -hmm. those things and yeah. name those tasks. Exactly. And, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And just kind of start your day with a game plan, yeah. you know, that can be really, really useful too, as opposed to just jumping in, you know, I think there's, um, almost like exercise and sports analogies, right? You think about the gymnast who, before they do this really complicated routine, they're envisioning that whole routine in their head. They're thinking about, like they're creating that muscle memory. I think that we can even do that in our days, right? Mm -hmm. Here's the things I need to get done. And instead of just jumping in, like with that chaotic brain, we can kind of take a moment <laughs> to pause. I think a, a great takeaway is just remembering that like, um, What's the phrase? It's like a, a an ounce of prevention is is worth a pound of cure. Is that how it goes? That sounds right. I don't know what okay. the actual measurements are, but it's something. <laughs> so almost like a minute of prayer 
is worth like an hour of being frantic, trying to scurry around, right? Because again, you're starting with that kind of calm mental energy. Mm -hmm. Um, And I want to kind of close just with a reminder that so many of us treat our worth based on how much we get done. And that can be really dangerous, especially when it comes to people who maybe have chronic health issues, or maybe you just slept really, really poorly the night before and and you're not in tip top shape to get everything done, right? Like, so I just want to remind people to be gracious with yourself. Your worth in God's sight isn't on how much you check off your to-do list. And I think it's important also in conversations about productivity to remember to always be, to be gracious with yourself too. And I think one of the, you know, we kind of set out to talk about prayerful productivity. And I think we spent more time talking about mindset of not Mm -hmm. elevating what you do above who you are. But I think one of, one of the things that, uh, that has really helped me also is just this idea of ask God if the things that are on your list are on his list, you know, are the things Mm -hmm. that are on, that are important for you to get done that day that are like, no, uh, whatever, no brainers. Like I've got to get this done today. Yeah. You know, um, are those on God's list? Because I've had times when there've been things that are on my list and I've realized that they are self-imposed responsibilities. Yeah. They're false mm-hmm. responsibilities. So it's I think, yeah. you know, God can prune that list and pride is involved in that too, because mm-hmm. there are things that I'm like, well, this has to get done for me to be valuable, but maybe mm-hmm. it doesn't. So that's yeah. Yeah, just another. Even the language we use saying, I have to do this. I try to be careful about that with the kids. I try to remind myself and in my language kind of, exemplify to them there are very few things we have to do we have to eat (laughs) that's true and drink and sleep so if I'm saying no I can't do that right now I have to respond to my emails no that's actually not true so even in my language I try to say I am going to answer these emails first and then I will do this and it just reminds us no there are very few things that you truly 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 have to do and again I think that that helps us to exemplify that, that grace and that humility. You know what? If I don't respond to emails today, nothing is going to be affected on a global scale, right? Like I am not even close to being that important. So even in the language we use, I think it's, it's helpful to show that humility and no, I don't, I don't have to do this. I'm choosing to do this and then that. And it also helps you to remember you're not a slave to your schedule, which is again, what happens when we come at it with like half to language. Yeah. I, I think that's, that is definitely a key to is not being, not being a slave to your schedule and being mm-hmm. open to God's leading in whatever you do. Even if mm-hmm. you prayerfully came to the conclusion that X, Y, and Z are going to get done today, be yep. open to God's leading in your life. And when you have that kind of like serendipitous, you know what? God's always in control. Mm -hmm. This doesn't get done. I mean, I'm not talking about feeding your child, but I'm talking about like, (laughs) no, they're eating the garden. But yeah. Um, but yeah, if, if, if it doesn't happen, look for the God, the, the purposes that God places in front of you and do those Mm -hmm. well and, and be present and fully, you know, fully present for those things. And, and that can be very rewarding. Amen. All right. Well, would we like to close in prayer? Do you want to pray or you want me to pray? Yeah. Yeah. I'll go ahead and pray to close us up. Yeah. God, we thank you so much that you are the author of time. You have given us time and energy to do the things that we need to do. And you have also given us such a beautiful gift of rest and grace. So I pray that you would help all of us to continue through this day with that sense of calm. I just pray that everybody who's listening and participating would feel five degrees, just calmer and more mentally organized than they did before and help us to practice just that grace of rest and that grace of surrendering our calendars to you. And we just thank you, God, for giving us the time and energy that you do give us. We pray that you would allow us to be good stewards of that. Amen.